Thank you, Lisa and Jessica, for taking the time to be out with me today. I really appreciate it. Please share with me a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Eliza and I am a revert of four years. Um, before this, uh, oh, I'm American by the way, <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, before this, I was working in the entertainment industry as an actress, model, all those kinds of things. When I entered Islam, I left um, many of those elements because I felt that it wasn't helping me get to Jannah. Inshallah, now I'm doing um, YouTube videos, much like Mr. Taufik. And um, also, uh, I'm a designer for a company. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Jessica. I'm also a revert of five years now. Um, I used to be, I mean, I'm German originally, so I grew up there. I lived abroad in the States for a while in the UK and pretty much lived a party life for most of my life uh, until the age of 27. When I decided that this is not really something that should be the purpose of life, I kind of like was missing something. So I was wondering what happens after death. And that's when I started to research, you know, wondering like, you know, is there a soul? Do we have one? Where does it go after we pass away? And that's why I started to research uh, into religion. What do you understand about the concept of hijab in Islam? For me, it's not just a piece of cloth on your head, but it actually goes much further than that. I mean, yes, symbol symbolically, it is a piece of cloth on my head, but it's also a hijab on the way that I speak, on the way that I think, the way that I act. So the hijab is actually helping me to control many things, you know, anger, um, bad language, bad thoughts, um, judgment. All of these things are encompassed in what the hijab means to me. Yeah, for me, um, you know, with hijab, it's like, I, I cover my hair, not my brain or my intelligence exactly. or my personality, yes. you know. Yes. I'm just like, uh, yeah. it's yes, yes, I'm covering up. And even, you know, from, from family or from friends or sometimes you're like, you know, you look different. Or like they, they would make comments that are not always pleasant to mm -hmm. hear. But at the same time, you know, uh, this is also a symbolic that I feel proud showing that I'm a Muslim. This is why I wear it. Let's get real here. I mean, these, there are questions like, do you get hot? Yes. Do you sweat under there? Yes. <laughs> do you get itchy? Yes. yes. <laughs> but look, it is something that empowers us. It's something that we choose. It's something that's more than just the itchy hotness, okay? No. And I wouldn't, even if someone says, why don't you take it off? I wouldn't want to take it off. Yeah. Like, I would feel impressed if someone told me, you must take it off. Do you dress the way that you do because you want to follow the Arabs? Huh? <laughs> Arabs? Excuse me? Okay. okay. Alright, here's a huge misconception about Islam is that when Arabs. you revert, you have to, you actually become an Arab. No. Uh, Islam is a way of life, it's a religion, it's a way it's a thought process, it's a way that you, you know, carry yourself, it's not a race. A lot of people ask this too, you know, it's a great question. Do you become an Arab? Do you have to dress like an Arab? No, of course not. You're still who you are. How, how would you dress like a German actually? Different, yes. like how does a German dress different from a British person yeah, or a French person? So I'm not sure. Hey, you look like a German and you look like a French. You look like a British. In fact, they all dress the same more or less. Yeah. So what are they then? You know, like why is Arabs one and then all the others are, yeah, I, I don't get it. So yeah, I'm not an Arab, I think. Besides my Arabic is very limited as well. So. <laughs> Is it true that in Islam, Muslim women have no rights? Have no rights? Oh, I have plenty of rights. I think I have discovered that I have more rights than I ever thought I would have, you know? I mean, uh, people always always uh, think of... In I mean, they just, I guess they think, uh, you know, we are free to do whatever, and once you're Muslim, you're not free to do whatever anymore. No, you have actually so many rights, um, you know, in... in uh, in your marriage, then in your everyday life, and you know when it comes to work. I mean, everything is stipulated and regulated, more or less. So um, I don't think we could say like you don't have any more rights. Then you should tell me what rights do I not have anymore. If you claim that I don't have any rights, tell me which. What are the rights that I don't have? Then we can discuss further. Mm -hmm. I think for women in Islam, it, Islam elevates women so high, and um, you know puts the women in this structure where rights are clearly defined whereas you know sometimes in secular life the rules and regulations that have to do with governing people they're kind of like it's kind of like a gray area you know in islam it's like black and white you know there, there's things that are haram things that you can't do then there's things that are halal things that you can do and the stuff in the middle either you stay away from or you have guidance with so you know exactly what you're doing you know exactly what you can fight for you know you know exactly what your rights are whereas when i, I I felt like when I wasn't a Muslim, I, I didn't know. Is this right? Is this wrong? I'm not sure. But here, I know exactly what I'm doing. I know what is going to get me to Jannah. I know what I shouldn't be doing because I'm told. I know what I should be doing to get more deeds. 
Alhamdulillah, I feel like, just like Jessica, I feel like my rights have been um, defined in a way that I, I'm actually more yeah. empowered, more confident because I know what I'm doing I, and I know what I stand for. Yeah. So it's, it's almost of, it depends on how you look at it. It's more like a redefining, I think. Is it true that in Islam, women have lower status than men? Deep down, we all know that at the end of the day, a woman is in charge. You know, <laughs> we just don't, we just don't show it outside. You know, like end of the day, I mean, come on, we're the queen of the house, right? End of the day, they kind of like outside, they like to be be macho, macho, but deep down, you know, come on, it's like every night, <laughs> that weak spot so it's like, okay, my love, okay, you know, I mean, Aww. no, there's no such thing as uh, uh, having a lower status. Yes, we have a different, we have different, um, you know, different, uh, what's the word? Rose. Different roles, yes, exactly. Different, have different roles. roles, but that doesn't mean that we are lower than the other yeah. the, the other person, right? The husband has to go to work, he has to provide for us, he has to pay for our clothing, pay for rent, pay for everything, and then I should claim that I have less rights. I mean, poor guy, you know, he's <laughs> the one that's basically out there, you know, trying to make big bucks. But I sit at home and I don't even have to cook. I don't have to iron his clothes. I didn't have to wash it. In fact, I have to do nothing, mm. right? I just have to be nice to him, which yeah. of course everyone expects, Muslim or not. Okay, so, so. I, I don't think I can add anything to that. <laughs> so I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> in reality, there are Muslim women who are oppressed. From your point of view, is it because of Islam? When you look at the tenets of Islam, Islam is a perfect ideological platform. However, the way that humans take it and implement it is something that's different. Mm. Humans have flaws. Platforms usually don't have flaws. Okay, I was a sociology major, so when I looked at socialism, capitalism, these platforms, they're not really flawed. What's flawed is how humans come and take it and interpret it and then apply it. So Islam, when you look at the rulings and, uh, you know, the teachings, they're all so beautiful, but you know, how people, you know, how cultures interpret it, how different genders interpret it, it's going to be, there's going to be fault. And of course, you know, like any other religion, any other thoughts, you know, school of thought, there are going to be people on either end. There's going to be extremes on this end, there's going to be extremes on this end. There's going to be people who are so liberal that it's like you can't control them. And then there's going to be people who are so oppressed that they just can't move. So yeah. if, you, if you're going to say that, you know, there are women who are oppressed in Islam, yes, but there are people oppressed in everything else too. Yeah, but they're not oppressed because of Islam. No, but they're this not. This is a cultural yeah, not, thing where, yeah. you know, in certain, uh, you know, regional areas, you know, in the world somewhere, there's always this understanding <laughs> that guys are superior, but that doesn't have anything to do with the religion. Yeah, no, this that, is a that's cultural, a cultural thing. thing. Yes. For women who are entering Islam, they're of age, they're educated. This is a, you yeah. know, a, you know, a religion of educated people, and it, and that's one of the first commands of Islam is to read, mm -hmm. educate yourself, ask questions, yes. get that knowledge. So once you have that knowledge, like Sister Jessica has been saying all along, after the research, after the understanding, you know that you're not oppressed, you know that you have rights, you know that you have a lofty, you know, position in Islam over the men. So, otherwise, you know, more people might research it, all the men. <laughs> so this is, you know, this is not a religion of oppression. It is a religion of education and understanding. What is your message to the people who say Islam oppress women? You, you cannot make a statement without having uh, the backup information. Yeah, what, what oppression uh, do you speak of? And firstly, I mean, I thought the same when I first uh, started to read about Islam because I thought, oh, you know, guys can marry four wives and, you know, at the same time, uh, it's a forced marriage, the woman has no say, she must just marry whoever the family decides. It's basically, pretty much what everyone else comes up with too, like the standard anti-Islamic, uh, you know, phrases. So once you start reading, you actually find out, no, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. So if you really believe that there's an issue, please reach us research first. Yeah. You know, don't tell me I'm oppressed unless you have, you know, uh, uh, unless you have read the Quran. Don't tell me, um, I don't know, all these claims that you always make, please research first, then we can discuss. When you come out with these claims of oppression, where did you hear those stories from? Who did you hear from and who yes, did they hear exactly. from? From media, from the, media. For here, did you actually hear it from a Muslim woman? <laughs> did yeah. you actually hear it from a Muslim person? You know, did you check it with the Muslim, the Islamic scriptures? What does it actually say? So it all goes back to facts. Um, fact checking. You know, it, it's not not even Islam. About anything in the media, anything in society, anyone can say anything, right? It's just words. 
But, you know, are you going to be the one who takes it a step further and actually finds out the truth and not just be, you know, someone who just goes ahead, you know, goes yeah. along with the herd? Don't be ignorant. Yeah. Don't be ignorant. Do your research. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't just take messages from, from the media, which we all know they're always there to brainwash people. They're always yeah. there to make us think bad of uh, another person because that's the only thing that sells. That's what people want to watch. You know, yeah. the, the bad stuff, like the oh, Muslim terrorists. Mm -hmm. Muslim terrorists, by the way. See, I'm even saying it. It comes together. It's like, no terrorist. It has to be a Muslim terrorist. It has to be Islamic extremism. You know, mm -hmm. those times are already married to each other. Yeah. You cannot find them but on these their are own fab uh, These are fabricated marketing tools that yes. are key search words. So, you know, don't believe everything on TV. Don't believe everything on Google. You know, there's so many, like I said, People can write anything or say anything that they want. Actually go out, find out for yourself, mm -hmm. talk to a Muslim woman, talk to a Muslim person, go to the masjid. Inshallah, the masjids are becoming more open. Find out for yourself. Yes. First-hand experience will always be second-hand, third-hand. Then, judge. Third then judge. Then judge. Only then judge. Muslims of the past, I feel, um, were quite shy and you know they were the type that they just you know they would just smile at you and be very nice but I, I think now Muslims are becoming more vocal they're becoming more open to you know having conversations so I would say if, if you are even a born Muslim or not yet Muslim who has questions just come and ask just come and talk actually open your heart to us because after you open your heart to us I think that all of our hearts will be just flooding out towards everybody, wanting to share, wanting to just discuss. I think everybody wants the same thing in this world, is just to live in harmony and have peace and, you know, have families that love each other and go to a place that is, inshallah, better than this world. Mm -hmm. So, so we have this commonality, so, and we have this common human family. So why not just reach out to each other instead of assuming? Just come, be our friends, we are, absolutely open we're open right yes <laughs> we're absolutely open <laughs> to being you know friends and having a conversation please come and ask us before you believe in something else find yes. it from the source find it from the source and um we all want the best for each other and we all want to make it to paradise and god has said himself that the only way to paradise is to obey him and to follow his commands and to pray and to worship only him and no other deity so that's why we all do what we do we believe in islam we believe that this is the, the the way to paradise so we can only invite you we can only invite you and it's your choice to do the research and to join uh, this religion and become a muslim or to leave it this is totally up to you uh, no one's being forced we weren't forced we did it also uh, out of our free will mm -hmm. Um, but it's still our message to, con you know, it's still our duty to convey the message, and we want to invite everyone to become a Muslim and to make it to Jannah together. Alhamdulillah. All right. Oh, I'm glad that you guys like each other. <laughs> <laughs>
sudah dikuasai oleh orang-orang di luar Islam terutama di negara kita yang kita bicarakan saat ini kita tidak cukup hanya teriak-teriak di jalanan saja tetapi kita sudah harus bangkit masalah ya, ekonomi secara syariat kita harus betul-betul berjuang Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meminta kita untuk ikhtiar dan berusaha dimana ma'asyara muslimin kita bersyukur kehadrat Allah dengan ya, adanya uh, market 212 ya, yang dipropori daripada kemarin daripada aksi damai 212 dan ini adalah wujud ya, dari wujud nyata daripada perjuangan uh, 212 dan Alhamdulillah kita sekarang 212 sudah ada di hadapan kita terutama di depan majelis kita condet majelis Tarul Muhtar ya, dibuka toko supermarket 212 Untuk supaya kita ini umat Islam lebih ya, peduli, ya, saya harapkan kita jangan lagi ya, memperkaya orang-orang kafir. Tapi kita, mari kita bersatu untuk bersama-sama berjuang ta'awanu ala biri wa taqwa, berjuang atas kebaikan dan atas ketakwaan. Dan Allah melarang kita ber, uh, berjuang atau uh, bantu-membantu dalam perbuatan dosa. dan dalam kekufuran, dalam permusuhan. Dan di mana ma'asyara muslimin kita ini ya mau dapat keberkahan dari Allah kalau kita bersatu. Tanpa kita bersatu, kita enggak akan ya mustahil kita akan mendapatkan kemuliaan di dunia. Kita sudah dikuasai ekonomi kita ya dari jalur politik sudah dikuasai oleh orang musuh-musuh Islam dan umat Islam lantaran minimnya ekonomi dan kurangnya iman takwanya kepada Tuhannya dan keyakinannya terhadap kehidupan akhiratnya sehingga mereka-mereka sudah dibeli dengan mudahnya oleh orang asing dan asing maka masyarakat muslimin dengan memperkuat ekonomi ya al mukminul gawi khairun min mukmin laif kata nabi seorang mukmin yang kuat dalam artian bukan hanya fisiknya kuat bukan hanya daripada ibadahnya yang kuat tapi tak kalah penting daripada itu semua yaitu apa faktor ekonomi terlebih dahulu harus diperkuat Ya, makanya Allah bilang Maukah kalian kutunjukkan Perniagaan yang memberikan kebahagiaan Di akhirat kelak Yaitu selamatnya diri kita Dari siksa murka Allah yang pedih Neraka seburuk-buruk tempat kembali Yaitu pertama beriman kepada Allah dan Rasul Yang kedua berjuang dengan harta Bagaimana kita mau berjuang dengan harta Kalau kita nggak punya harta Bagaimana kita mau berzakat Kalau kita nggak punya duit Ya, maka kita ini lebih baik kita membayar zakat daripada menerima zakat. Inilah jadul olya khairumin jadul sublah. Ya, jadi tangan yang di atas lebih baik daripada tangan yang di bawah. Maknanya kita lebih baik memberi daripada kita selalu merengek kepada makhluk. Maka ma'asyara muslimin ya, kita himbau daripada kaum muslimin khususnya warga condet. Mari kita semua ya, rapatkan barisan kita dan yakinkan kita bahwa melalui ini perjuangan yang telah Allah tampakkan di hadapan kita ini tanpa di, dengan dukungan dan bantuan kita tanpa kerjasama kita maka tidak akan kita mendapat pertolongan dari Allah naudzubillah min dalik mudah-mudahan insyaallah ini adalah uh, insyaallah wujud nyata dan insyaallah akan segera ya, mendapatkan kemuliaan umat Islam ya di negara kita dan insyaallah pemimpin kita akan tegak ya di dalam membela ya Uh, perjuangan Islam. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Itu saja.